Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to give everyone a few moments to get on. But this afternoon, I have kombucha, which feels like the biggest treat. And I'm super pumped about it. It's watermelon wonder, so that should be fun. Hey, Mel, welcome. Hey, Shell. Hey, James. Welcome, everybody. If y'all can, oh, it's, uh, oh, it's Miss Marla. Sorry, I saw your first name. If you can, um, as you hop on, just sign your name and just kind of say a quick hello. I can't always read people's screen names really well, but it helps me to be able to see um, what your actual name is. So if you want to just post your name, do something like that, that'll help me to know who's here so I can kind of talk to you throughout the time. Y'all take this time to get a fancy drink, get a snack, get something to kind of make you feel like a treat, make you feel special during this time. Um, we're gonna give people just a few minutes to get on. But for now, I will show you what we were working on. First, let me say, here, hold up. I'll show you the flower and then I'll show you the, um, the trial run. So this is the flower we're doing today. I gave it a backdrop so that we can kind of visualize a little bit better how it's gonna look on our page. We'll decide after this class if that's helpful or not. Because of that, we've had to change up the structure of things. So you're gonna need your transparent or your um, disposable cleanable surface. Wow, everybody's with you today, Mary Margaret. Hello, Marge. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Pam. Wow, welcome everybody. Um, you need whatever surface you have around during this quarantine to paint on. Um, I have paper. You need pencil, paintbrush, wash rag, cleaner water than what I have. Don't judge me yellow, blue, red paint, white paint, and then whatever treats you need. So I've got the flowers, obviously, so if y'all just get those things together, we can get started. I will show you that this right here was the trial painting, which I am stoked with. Y'all, this is gonna look so good. I'm really pumped about this, but if you remember, I have, and you've, you've taken other classes with me, you will remember that I have talked about with the white flowers, how the biggest struggle is doing white on white and how we've had to like work really hard to make the colors pop off the page. With these guys, it is the opposite. Like you can, you can do a lot of stuff to mess this flower up, but you're still gonna get this beautiful contrast and these beautiful bright colors. So this is gonna be a win, I think. I was really pumped when I found these flowers. I had gone to several stores to try and get like a store-bought flower today because I've been finding less and less kind of flowers growing along the road. But then like as I was going to the next store, I just pulled into my studio for a quick second and these had just popped up randomly, like just a small patch. So really pumped about it. It's California Poppy, if I didn't say that already. Um, we've given people a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you have your drinks. I hope you have everything that you want with you. And let's get started with painting. It might be a quicker class today, but it's definitely gonna be a fun one. So new setup here. Here's a funny thing for y'all. I don't know if I've ever shown you, but this is what I have my, <laughs> as my um, backdrop for how I hold my, flower, my camera up. And today we're doing like half of the Spanish to English New Testament. But it's whatever works, right? Okay, so that's set up. Let me get my charger so we don't lose the feed. That's there. And then I'm just gonna set up to where I can have y'all's comments and I can hear from you during the class. So just give me two seconds. That should be good to go. I'll be able to get your comments throughout the time. So y'all just let me know if you have any questions. The first thing we're gonna do as always is we are going to observe. So these poppies have been closing in on themselves since I brought them inside. So the shape has changed from when I did my trial run. But from a distance, we can see it's a nice long stem. With these guys, we can see that they're a little bit segmented. 
And then the flowers, the leaves themselves are very kind of is spindly the right word? They kind of finger out, um, kind of like cilantro or parsley. So we'll play with that a little bit. It is a bright orange color. We've got some yellow, some like light yellow coming out and then some deep rich oranges in the middle. We're gonna play with that. And then just a really pretty green. Also, I don't know if you can, we'll see if we can pick it up here. It's got this really pretty pink salmony oval that kind of comes right here at the base of each of the flowers. And then we see a light green kind of shoot that comes down from the flower before we get to the darker green stem. So that's gonna be another detail that we play with. So yeah, that's what we're working with today. I forgot to tell you to take your deep breath, but you can't see me now, but where you are, take a deep breath. Let all of the pressure wash off of you right now. Let all of the stress wash off of you right now. Look at this flower, study this flower. The next hour or so is all about just skill building and growth. It is nothing about perfection. We are just going to focus on something lovely, dwell on something beautiful, and let all of the other stress take a back seat for the next bit of time. So this is not about perfection. This is all about skill building. This is all about just enjoying your time. So, and also remember that if this one doesn't look good, you can always do it a second time. No one is saying that you have to end with the first one. So just keep enjoying, keep with me. It's gonna be a fun time. Welcome, Laura. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our pencil and then we're gonna start with this pencil line coming straight down. But we can see that this one is a segmented flower. So instead of one long line coming down, we're going to draw this line to about right here. We'll bring it down to this marker right here and then we'll pull it down, okay? So you have a good gauge of what our composition is gonna look like with this background. Do your best, but remember, it does not have to be exactly like this. So draw a little line right here. Pull it down to about right here. And remember I'm using, there's finger axes, wrist axes, elbow axes, and then my shoulder axis. With this I'm using both my shoulder and my elbow. So different lines, different lengths will require different axes. So that one I did my fingers, this one I kind of pulled with my elbow, and then I'm definitely gonna pull all the way off the page like that. Nice and simple. Next, let's go ahead and draw the next line coming down. And we'll come over here. And I'm gonna hit this one right here. Then I'll pull it down right here. And then I will pull it all the way into this one coming down here. And now I'm gonna come back up to get this guy in. So he's right in the middle. So I'm just gonna pull him down to the spot. Okay, and then next we're going to tackle this guy right here. He has a nice pretty bend to him and he doesn't segment as much. We see a nice bend to the first segment. So we'll let it kind of curve to here and then I'll pull down from here. Okay, and now we're going to tackle this guy over here and it has a really pretty S curve too. So I'll come over to this spot right here and I'm gonna curve. So I'm using the curve of my wrist. I'm holding my pencil. If you can see, I'm holding my pencil with the eraser like this and I'm planting my hand on the page and I'm curving and I'm letting that be the way that I curve. So you'll notice that I hold my pencil differently than if I'm writing. So I'm kind of moving it around like this. That I curve and then I'm gonna drag it down and over. Okay. Now I want us to add in some of these leaves coming out that are really pretty, but, so I'll show you real fast. So with this, you can see they kind of have these little scalloped, like little dot lines coming out words y'all words are not my thing at least I can paint right um 
So it's rounded, it's not straight lines. But we're with our pencils, we're gonna draw straight lines. So then with our brushes, we'll come in and we'll round it out and we'll make it thicker. But we're just gonna draw the outlines, like the skeletons of what these leaves are gonna be. So just kind of trust me on this. We'll start up here on this, on this little segment right here that I drew. I'm just gonna have a line come out and then I'll basically just do one, two, line, one, two, line, one, two, line, one, two. So I'm kind of drawing little raggedy pitchforks where I've got my center line and then two coming off, center line, two coming off. Now I'll come down here. This one's a little bit bigger and I like the size variation that these leaves have. So we're gonna play with that. So I'm gonna come up nice and long here. I'll do my little pitchfork, draw another pitchfork, another one, and then we'll do another one. Hey Hannah, wow, I'm glad you're here during like a normal class time, this is fun. All right, draw another little line, do your pitchfork, another one, pitchfork it out. So we're just kind of drawing these little lines. This is the skeleton of what our leaves will be. It's not exactly what our leaves will be in the end. So just kind of continuing to go through. I'm switching over to this guy right here and I'm just gonna draw a couple, just like that. That's it for that one. And then over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Can I zoom in on the leaf while I'm drawing? Yes. Okay, is that better? Mary Margaret, while we're doing this drawing part, I'll just kind of keep this zoomed in for right now. Let me see. But here is what I'm drawing. So you can see, I just keep drawing a line and then kind of pitchforking it out and then another line and pitchforking it out. So we're not drawing leaves, we're just drawing some lines to kind of all come together. Make sure y'all can see that. I'll remind me, y'all remind me to zoom it back out when we start painting because goodness knows I will forget. Okay, so pitchfork, pitchfork, nice and simple. I'll come down to this little junction right here and we see a little bit more coming out. So I'm going to do a nice longer one with some V's coming out. And this is not exactly the way that these leaves are made, these little pitchforks, but I feel like it's the easiest way to teach. And when I did my trial run, it really translated pretty close. So I'm pleased enough with it to continue on that style. There's no point in us counting exactly how many points are on each structure. That's just gonna be stressful for everybody. I'll do another one right here coming down. That one I did a little bit longer as well and I'm gonna do some offshoots. So I'll do two big offshoots, two big pitchforks, and then I'll do some small ones coming off of those. These are not exact. These are just lines to kind of show me how these little raggedy ends are gonna come out. Okay, let's keep drawing. This is gonna be the most intensive part of our drawing today. Um, Hmm, is this a problem for y'all with the, I guess not yet. It'll be a problem in a second. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm sorry. Just because I don't want the comments to cover over what we're about to do. Okay. But y'all know what we're doing. It's these little lines and then draw your little pitchforks. So, not super precise. Important thing is, if you look at them from a distance, you can see just how you really can't see the detail of it. So that's not gonna matter too much. Okay, so we've done these sections. Let's jump over to this guy right here. And we'll do her pitchfork, pitchfork, pitchfork. So I'm just giving them the general size, the general placement. Um, but then I'm not really caring too much about the preciseness after that.
Lots of little pitchforks, one coming up behind. This is gonna blend together a lot when I actually do the real painting. But it turns out so well. So just to remind you, this is what it ends up looking like. So keep trusting me. These are just lines to show us where things are going. They are not the finished drawings. Let's hop over to this one. Pitchfork. How many times can I say the word pitchfork, y'all? <laughs> At least you'll know how to draw these, I guess. Y'all let me know if you have other questions or other requests. Okay. That's that one. Okay, coming down to this section right here. It's a lot more busy and detailed, but I do love it. So I am going to draw this one coming off as a nice big shoot and having it overlap with this guy. Because these are all, the other thing is, if you've done other classes where you're kind of skeptical of overlap, um, these are all the same color and we're not going to shade the different colors. So it's totally pitchfork, Hannah. <laughs> um, this is totally, um, yeah, it's all going to be the same color. It's not going to blend in. Um, we're not going to have to figure out what's on top, what's not on top. Welcome, Nerdly. I'm glad you're here. Um, it's just going to all blend in together. So you don't have to stress or worry about having to figure out all the shading of these little things later. It's not going to be a problem. Just keep drawing those out, filling them out. They can overlap with the other guys. That's totally fine. Remember, vary your sizes. It's tempting to do each of these little sections as the same size, but it's going to look more natural if you have some that are small like this and some that are larger and longer like this. That's going to add to the variation and make it look more realistic. We've talked about this before in this class, but the less perfect an organic form is, the more realistic it's going to look. When you do them absolutely perfect and spotless with everything the same size and shape, that's when it starts to look not natural because things in nature are always a little bit wonky, which is really beautiful. So you want them not to match. Basically, we're using the same systems to create them, but we're making the point not to use the same stencil to create So I'm just drawing some more in. Keep them with that one, two, three, one, two, three pitchfork. <laughs> I've got those guys all in here. And then I'm gonna come over here and specialize on this guy right here real fast if y'all wanna join me, cause he's a little bit different. So it's gonna be a nice long line, long for these guys. So you'll see it's this long. And then it's mostly on one side that's really pretty. So I'm still going to do the threes, but I'm letting them all stay on this one side. And then there's a nice little hit right there. And that guy. Cool. Okay, I'm going to bring it up closer. This is what we're working with right now. It does not have to look exactly like mine. I guarantee you if I picked four different poppies, they would not look like this. So if your leaves are in different places, we'll just say you drew a different poppy than me, and that's totally fine. All right, I'll give y'all a second to catch up. I'm gonna take a sip of my kombucha. Mm. Gosh, that's so good. I love kombucha. Okay, that was a gift of my sister's, by the way. My family is so nice and so generous. All right, now we're gonna tackle our little discs, see if I can grab this, and tap all our little discs at the bottom of our petals, which is such an interesting thing that I've never known about poppies until today. So nice and simple, you're just going to draw a little flat disc on the top of each of your stems, including this guy. This one has one also. Yes, Hannah, this will be on my stories 
once this is finished, it normally takes about five minutes to load. So once we close this out, it'll go up on my stories. And then I will try and get the class up live. Probably sometime, if I'm being honest, realistic, it'll probably be like Sunday. I'll have it up on my IGTV just because we have the launch of all these paintings happening tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. So I'll probably not get to making this into a class outside of that until like Sunday. So you can either take it for the next 24 hours or probably later this weekend. Hey Amber, welcome. Just your little flattened discs, including this guy because he has one too. Flattened discs. And we can go ahead at the base of these discs and just do a little triangle. There we go. So I just drew my little disc and then I did a little triangle coming down. And that's just gonna be our marker for where our lighter green is gonna go. Do a little triangle. There you go, nice and easy. Wait, did I just, oh, I think there's something on my, on my phone, hold up. LOL. There's something on the screen of my phone. Or can you see it? Hold up, this is gonna bother the mess out of me. Okay, I don't know what that is on my screen. Um, I'm an idiot. I'm not even gonna tell you what it was. I figured it out. Lord help me all. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, so now we're gonna draw our flowers out. And already these are on a different position than when I drew them before. So before they were very open, very flowy and folding out and all that kind of stuff. And now we've got them more triangular. We're gonna draw them as they are right now because I like working from a live model and not making it up. Okay. Yeah, y'all, I was real nervous for a hot second that I like broke my phone or something or like got kombucha on it, but nope. Nope. All right. So let's start with this one. Nice and pretty. One thing I did not mention before, but we are working with four petals. We've had other flowers like this, but there are four petals that we're working with. It's not an endless number. It is four in total. So we will see that in the overlap. We'll make a point not to, uh, not to pay more than that. Okay, so we'll start with this one right here because it's on top. So I'm just gonna draw my little straight line coming off this guy with a little bit of a flare. So I'm just kind of flicking it off a little bit, a little flare to the side. And then I'm going to bring it in and over. Okay. Now we're going to do a little bit of a curved top. And then, so I kind of do like a little lazy S curve. And then I'm going to pull that down. And then with this guy, we have a really pretty fold. So we're going to do that fold. Y'all just follow me and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing that shape right there. So do you see that? I just did a little round flat, round flat like that. And then I'm gonna pull it a little bit past the flat line and then I'm gonna pull it around. But I need to pull it further over. So I need to come all the way to here. Sorry, it's different. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but my angle from where I sit is different than your angle from where the camera lens is looking down. Um, and y'all's angle is better than my angle. So, and then I'm just gonna do, yeah, I'm just gonna close that out. We can only see the three. Let's work to the top one. You can kind of see, we see one big one coming out. So we'll start with the big one. So center, I'm gonna do straight, and then bring that in. Brandon, welcome. Now I'm just gonna do this little side one. 
and I did it kind of like a wonky shape. I didn't really do anything specific. You can just make yours a little rounded. You can make yours a little flat. It's kind of a roughly spot. And then this last one is coming over just a little bit. So I'm starting inside and then straight. Looking good, y'all. And thankfully, this guy right here is still pretty open, so we'll still get that dynamic. So let's start with this petal right here. And he comes out like this, open, and then he flares out. So here's that shape I just made. I kind of did a little bit of a flare out, and I'm keeping my my top soft because it's a very ruffly flower so I'm not keeping a hard line at the top. Now I'm going to come over here to this side and you'll see it starts out right here, comes up, and then comes in. So I'm starting right here, coming up, and then fanning in. And then over here, same thing, I'm gonna come out a little bit, but we see right here, we have a really pretty loop, so it kind of circles in. So I'm gonna take this side right here, and I'm just gonna create a little circle, a little loop. So not a closed circle, I just kind of took it, and then I looped it around, and I'm gonna pull it all the way back to here. So I just closed it out, I did a tight circle right here, and then I closed it out over top over here. All right, last one to draw. We've got two more things to draw, but this is the last flower to draw. So we're gonna take a little, right here, we're gonna start with this one since it's on top. I'm creating a nice long triangle. And I rounded this side right here. So I rounded that, pointed that, and then brought it in. So it's a triangle with just a rounded curve right there. Next I'm going to take this guy. He comes beyond this petal. So I'm just going to create that. And then this one comes behind that. So I'm going to pull him out here. And then I'm going to give him a little bit of a curve. So I'm giving him a little bit of that curve where it opens up. And then I'm going to close this out with the fourth one. Even though I can't really see the fourth one, I'm just going to close it out. Okay. Finally, we're going to hit this pod, nice and simple, just do a nice big teardrop, just like that. And with that, we're going to put our pencils down. I'll give you two seconds, I'll take a sip of my drink, you take a sip of yours, finish up with your drawing, and put your pencil away. Okay. The first color we're gonna mix today is our orange. So that's red and yellow. We are not using white yet, so don't pull that out. White is going to, it typically strengthens the color, but it also mutes it a little bit. So it makes it to where it stands on top of other things, but it takes away some of that vibrancy that makes the color nice and bright. So we're gonna start by doing a base color that's a very bright orange and then we'll go on with some mixes to um, strengthen the color up after we've got our nice bright base. So go ahead and mix up your orange. This one is pretty equal parts red and yellow. Maybe a little bit more red than yellow because we're going to start with our base. I'll show you in a second what color I've mixed or what it looks like. Okay, this is the color I've mixed. 
a pretty true orange. And now we are just going to cover over our base of our flower. So we're just filling this in. Don't worry about your pencil lines. You are staying inside your outer lines, but your pencil lines, because this is still a pretty transparent color, your pencil lines will show through. So you'll still be able to separate your flower petals later. For now, we're just covering over all of our flower and just staying inside the lines. That's our goal, inside the exterior line. too much, um, though we do need to stay on schedule if you are part of the live. Um, if you're part of the recording, you can always pause me at any point, finish up a stage, and then push play again, um, and keep going that way. But if you're part of the live, um, we are going to go to the hour mark with this class, try and keep the pace with me. Um, and then at the end of the hour, if we still need to work a little bit more, if we still have more questions, what we're gonna do is I will close out this live and then we will reopen a new live for y'all to ask any questions and for me to kind of help y'all get to the finish of things. So if you're in the recording, just pause, finish up each stage and then keep going. But if you are live, just remember, we're going to open up a second live for you to be able to ask questions and I'll help you talk through the finish. Just try and hang with me as long as you can. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's go ahead and we're going to hit some of our darker points. So we're going to keep this orange. We're not going to a true red, but we're going to mix more red in. So we're going to make a darker orange. Still just these two colors but a darker orange, and then I want you to wipe your brush off. So, the way that looks, I flatten my brush in between the rag, and then I pull. So I do the flat side, and then that way, I get a nice, let's see if I can show you, yeah, a nice sharp point and a flat line. So that way we're gonna be able to get our nice lines in there. So mix that darker orangey red, and then let's hit our pencil line with this darker color. So the interior pencil lines where flower petals are overlapping. Just go ahead and outline them from the base with this darker color. Just kind of shooting from the base along those lines. And then I'm also gonna go inside, like right here, there's a really pretty ruffle. So I'm gonna make that ruffle. So I'm just gonna do this line right here that I've already created. I'm just putting that little bit of color in there. And then I'll do these pencil lines. Okay. So now you can drop your brush for a second. We're going to grab our white and just pop that over to the side. We're going to mix that really pretty salmon color that we have in our little discs. What we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be moving away from our flower petals to let that color dry before we try to build on top of it. So let's take a little bit of white. Mix that with our 
orange that we have, and it's a little bit more red in them, we're gonna make it more of a pink color. Here's the color I've just mixed. And we're just gonna fill in these discs, nice and simple. Just fill those discs in. Make sure you hit all five, don't forget the little pod. And then you can wipe your brush off. Okay, so let's go ahead while we're giving our flowers time to dry from that color. Hey Cassidy, welcome. While we're giving our flowers time to dry, we're gonna go ahead and mix our green and start working on our stems because that's gonna be a time taker. So we're gonna mix blue and yellow with a little bit of white. And remember, we don't have to use all the paint that we put on the board. I like to drag bits of my paint and mix it. And then if it needs, like mine needs more yellow in it, I just take a little bit more yellow. So that way you're not having to pull your paint tubes out. You're not going through a lot of paint. Um, you can just kind of work slowly that way. Take a little bit of white, mix that in. Ooh, it just got dark in here. Let me turn on. Let me turn on another light. It's getting to that point in the evening or in the afternoon where the light kind of is less reliable. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this color. I think it's good. I've mixed just a little bit of white to make it a little bit thicker. Um, just a little less bright. And flattened it up a little bit and now we're gonna do that so before we do that though this requires a very thin brush so you very much want to take it wipe it off so get a nice thin oh well okay before I put random green fingerprints on um, a nice thin brush because we're just gonna be tracing these lines nice and skinny if you need to put a little bit of water in and mix that in with your color. That'll make it glide better if your paper likes to stick. If your paint doesn't really glide well, you can mix a little bit of water and just make sure you flatten that brush out nice and good before you start approaching it. And we can always rotate our papers. So, okay, clean hands. I'm going to put my hand on the actual paper and leave it at the same distance from my Leave it like this. So I'm same distance from the thing, I'm dragging the brush. So draw that line. Nice and thin. If you deviate from your pencil line, don't try and make it up. You can always erase your pencil line later. So just keep going. See, I've just done that very thing. Keep going, draw your lines, and just try your best to keep it nice and thin. And just drag it down. So I'm personally, I'm going to do my stems first and then I'll go back and do my flowers. So let's do that and then I'll show you how to do the, I mean not flowers, my leaves. And then I'll show you how to do the leaves. So nice and thin, if, you're bright, if your hand wobbles, that's okay, you can just make up a new line. Just try and keep a similar thickness of the stem all the way throughout. Mine is not done perfectly, but that's okay. I'm mixing a little bit more white into my green just because I want it to be a, a little bit softer. Um, you can always do that yourself if you want to. Just change that color to whatever you're wanting. Just make sure that you keep that brush good and thin. So I'm planting my wrist on the paper, holding my brush the same distance from the paper, and then I'm just dragging my brush with my shoulder and my elbow. So just trying to follow that line. Let me know if you have questions. And rotate if you need to. So I was getting to where I was going to be going over wet paint. So I just rotated my page. And I'm good to go. Okay, 
And you can also just go ahead and fill in your pod with green. So try and stay inside the lines if you can. Just fill that in. Okay, so coming over to our little florets, this, flatten that brush out, get it nice and pointy, nice and thin, um, but it should be fairly simple. We're not trying to stay, obviously there is no line to stay inside of. We're just using these pencil marks as our marker for where these are gonna be. So I'll start right here. Actually, I'll start right here and let you see. So I'm doing this line for the bigger line and then I'm just going to dab my brush just like this, just dotting it down where those lines are. So I'm basically, I'm just dotting this down and I'm getting those lines. See, nice and simple. So just make sure you get that nice flat brush. You can flat, keep reflattening it if you need to, and then just dot your brush down. So if you need to pull a little bit, like drag and pull, drag and pull, um, drop and pull, I mean, do that too. But use the shape of the brush to your favor. Just fill them all out like that. If you ever need more green, you know how to mix it. It's just blue, yellow, and white. We're just filling in, covering over these pencil marks we made. questions at this point or is it just a matter of drawing an infinite number of green lines? I feel like it's the latter, but I'll answer any questions if you have if you have questions. else to notice you can see my pencil lines especially right here are still visible but that doesn't bother me in the least I kind of like it so it adds a little detail that I could never get with my brush like my brush would never get that thin to kind of add that little bit of variation so if you can still see your pen your pencil marks through here that is totally fine um, just lean into it and tell people it's on purpose Some 
flip my pencil lines were even too close together, so there's no way for me to get all three shapes in there, all three lines in there. That's totally fine. Remember, there weren't exactly three lines for each of these leaves. That was just kind of how we chose to draw it. on this section if you are doing the live especially. Um, go ahead and put the pause on it, join me in the next bit of instruction, and then you can come back to this because you know how to put, how to mix green and you know how to do this, so you can always come back to this section on your own time. I'm going to give you all another second or two. I'll take a sip of my drink and then we'll keep moving forward. You're with me remember you can come back you can come back to these leaves you can finish them later um, but hang with me we're gonna make some white into some of that green and we're gonna make a lighter color and now we're gonna fill in those little triangles that we drew earlier at the base of our flowers so go ahead and fill those in the way I'm doing it is I'm putting the point of my brush I'm basically doing this so I'm going point and then I just rotate it a little bit, or if that was poor, but like that. Bless it, I can't get it right on my hand. But you see what I'm doing, just rotating. There we go. There it is. So that's what we're doing. Just kind of fill it in. You can fill it in other ways if you want to, that's just my way. Fill in those little triangles. And then also, for our pod, you can fill in that triangle and then just kind of add a little bit at the base and along one side. So we're just kind of creating the highlight. And then wash that brush off. Okay, now we're going to want some yellow just by itself. Okay? We're going to take this yellow, and I'll start down here because it's very evident. Ooh, I had way too much on my brush. And we're just going to cover over. Hold up, that is not visible whatsoever. Okay, take the yellow, put a little dab of white in there. We're going to need to strengthen this yellow up. It was way too transparent. But it's still a straight yellow. It's not a beige or anything. I just mix a little bit of white to kind of give it some strength. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm just going on the tip of this one, the very top, and then I'll flatten my brush out, which we should have done already, and then I'm just going to draw the other side of that red line. So I just kind of flat and then draw the line. And then we're also on the top edges of each of these petals, we're going to put a little bit of that yellow. and then ruffle, do one line coming down. So you see on the inside lines, I'm doing a line, and then on the top, I'm doing the top um, with this light yellow. Coming up to this one, we actually have light yellow at the base and on the top ridges. So I'm gonna do a 
a little bit at the base, coming up the line, and then I'll do the top ruffle. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm just going to do the top of this guy. And then I am not going to approach. Move this over. I'm not going to do this back pedal right here, right now. I'm not going to mess with that one. I'm just going to do those two for right now. We can always build. It's easier to build than to subtract sometimes. So let's just keep going with building what we know, and then we can always move back. So we're just using our true yellow with a little bit of white to make it stronger. And we're gonna go to the top of that one right there and then that line. So top and then over. Make sure you have a nice flat brush. Keep flattening it if you need to. And if it's not already ruffled, you can kind of add a little ruffle to it. Pull that down to that line. And this one too has a little bit of that white base, that yellow, light yellow base. So I'm gonna add that base right in, right there too. And then there's also a soft yellow on that corner too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the top corner of this back pedal. Just that corner. Okay. Let's pop over to this guy. Keep a nice flat brush. We're gonna focus on that first, this line right here, and just kind of doing the edge. So move your paint, uh, move your paper if you need to. It's gonna stay on right on that line. Don't cover over your dark line. Just do it on the other side of the dark line. Just like that. And we'll do that same, we'll do that ripple right there that I love. So I'm just gonna come right here on this line. Pull it down a little bit. And then you'll see that it kind of, it doesn't go straight down, it goes over. See like right there? It goes over, not down. So let's pull that over. If you've already gone straight down, that's okay. That is not a problem. I also added, because it has a little line, I added a little line right there, too. All right. And then I'll just do one little yellow spot right here also. How are we doing? So let's do that again. So crazy as it may be, it's going to be all about the layering. So let's mix a little bit more yellow and let's see how it layers on top now. So we're just gonna keep thickening up our color. So this time I didn't mix any white in and I'm just going back over with yellow to the spots that we just covered. So I'm just kind of fanning that, just making that color strong. We are coming up on time for the recorded class. Um, remember, if you are live, we'll close this out and I'll open up a new one. But real fast, while we're still in this class, I wanna show y'all how to add a little bit of ruffle if you want. So, I'll show you on this guy right here. Uh, basically, I have my yellow right here, and I just, ooh, 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 what did I just do? My brush was dirty, y'all. Be better. Okay, so a little bit of yellow. And then I'm just going to pull a little line down in the center. And that will kind of give me a ripple effect. So if you want to do that, if you want to add some ripples and some waves into your petals, you can totally do that just by pulling that in. And then if you want to add a little bit more of a light spot, a lighter rim, you'll just mix a little bit more white. with some yellow, flatten that brush out nice and good, and you'll just kind of do those lines, 
Do the outer lines again, nice and thin, nice and light touch. And you'll just kind of touch that. So if you want a nice, if you want a lighter rim, just like that, you'll just mix that lighter yellow and just make sure to keep it nice and thin. You can pull it down a little bit for some of your ripples. But it's all about building, slow and steady. I'm just touching these rims with this lighter color just to kind of give it a little bit more of that dimension. But I don't want to cover over all of it because then I'll lose some of that vibrancy that we've got in the color. And these are very vibrant colors, which I love. Okay. Now I'm going to, for everyone who is in the recording, here is your screenshot. So if you want to take a screenshot of the picture that you're working from, here is that. Here is a screenshot with the flowers themselves. And here's one of just the flowers. And then that is it for our recorded class specifically. If you have any questions, if you've been watching the recording and you have any questions, please DM me. I don't care if it's today, if it's next week, next month, however long after this course is. Please DM me if you have questions. I am here to help. I'm happy to help. I don't mind how long it's been. And I don't mind if I don't know you personally. We will get to know each other and I will help you out. Um, if, you're in the, if you're watching it live and you still need help, we're going to pop off of this and then I'll reopen a new one. So just hop back on with a new one. Otherwise, I hope you all have had fun. I hope you are happy with your finished product and that you have just enjoyed your time today. I have definitely had fun with my time, and I will see you all later.